colleagues in the House of, Rep of Representatives, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. This representation rises in this chamber for the first time on a matter of personal privilege to speak regarding an urgent concern that directly affects the life of my constituents and the lives of millions of Filipinos who live in Metro Manila. It is an issue, if not addressed, may also derail the aspirations of the Philippines to become, as President Ferdinand Bombo Marcos Jr. says, Asia's fastest rising star. The issue, Mr. Speaker, is flooding in the national capital region. Many of us in the House are intimately familiar with this problem. There are those who have been stuck in traffic resulting from heavy, heavy afternoon downpours. The House has suspended work in the past because of widespread widespread flooding in the met metropolis. Many of us have had to cancel or postpone meetings in parts of Metro Manila following heavy rains because, of ro because roads are impassable. Isa sa mga lugar na apektado po ay ang aking distrito. Unfortunately, our district is not alone in its misery. As many parts of Metro Manila become inaccessible and are paralyzed when rains pummel our capital. The damage caused by floods in the whole country, not just in Metro Manila, is substantial. The Philippine Statistics Authority recently revealed that the total cause of damage due to natural extreme events and disasters that hit the country in 2021, Mr. Speaker, was 60.7 billion pesos. This is 27% higher than in 2020 when the damage cost us 47.8 billion pesos. The future appears just as bleak. A report by global professional service company DGHD Economics, the economics of water risk and future resilience, points out that our country is ranked as four most affected country in the world for water-related disaster with approximately 20 typhoons entering the country each year, often bringing torrential rain and flooding. These floods and tropical storms, according to the report, could result in losses amounting to 89 billion US dollars between 2022 and 2050. At the current exchange rate, that is equivalent to 5.1 trillion pesos, Mr. Speaker. Flooding in Metro Manila is a painful constant that is reflected in the headlines of articles that report them. Please allow me to provide some examples. In 2012, a major daily published an article that reads, Philippine stocks fall as investors assess impact of floods. In 2014, an international wire service posted a similar article online which says heavy rain floods Philippine capital, markets, schools shut. In 2017, a respected international business publication came out with a piece entitled Philippine Markets Shut at Waste High Storm Water Floods Capital. An editorial in a broadsheet in 2018 shouts, Paralyzed by floods. In 2020, in the midst of COVID-19 pandemic, an international media outfit ran an article with this headline, Manila paralyzed after Typhoon Vamco sweeps across Philippines. Last year, the same broadsheet that, pub that published the Paralyzed by Floods editorial came out with another editorial entitled Paralyzed by Floods Again. What people around the world have read about what people around the world have read about my constituents experience on a regular basis. In my first month as a representative, thunderstorms and heavy rain caused sudden flooding in several barangays in my district in Barangay Mariblo, Barangay Santo Domingo, and Barangay Talayan residents experienced, experienced waist-deep floods at sa mga barangay po, na katulad ng Bungad, San Antonio, Katipunan, at Dabaya naman, hanggang tuhod po ang baha. Doon naman po sa West Riverside, kasama po ang Barangay Del Monte na hindi na po makalabas ang mga tao sa kanilang bahay dahil po sa tindi ng baha. Many roads in my district were impassable, which made it impossible for families to go out and buy food and other basic necessities. Ganun na po kalala, Mr. Speaker. With assistance from our city and barangay officials as well as national government agencies, we extend to families who need food and water. In the days and weeks that followed, we put in place teams to monitor and respond to flooding. 
and, to ha and have in several instances donated pumps to chroni chronically affected residents whose homes are flooded even after a light downpour. While I commend my officials in Quezon City for their assistance, especially the barangay captains in our district, these actions are stopgap measures at best and will, and will not address the roots of our peri perennial flooding problem.